This week in Nerf, we've got new blasters in people's hands already and a bunch of community updates. I'm Jangler, and every Saturday morning, this is your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. Now, before we get on into it this week, I want to start things off a little bit different and start with the shirt of the week, which is this one, the stock options shirt. Now, if you've watched this channel for any length of time, you've seen this shirt for several years now. And people will have asked me many times where I got it, uh, where they can get it, or similar, and now you can. This is available through Teespring, and I'm saying this because I want to test something out. Uh, I got access to what's called the merch shelf, and it should show up directly below the video and have clickable links of different shirts available in the Teespring sh store. So let me know if that's there, if it's working properly, if I did it right, it should be there. If not, I want to know so I can fix it, but uh, that should be down there. If not, there is a link in the info as well, but uh, this design is available now on there, and this is one of my favorites, so uh, let me know if it's working. But anyways, let's jump back into the news, because that is why we are all here, and let's start off with some of the new blasters that are set to appear later this year and next year. Now, the YouTube channel AL, which has in the past had blasters early, also has some next year's offerings early, uh, including the Bulldog, the Hypnos, uh, the, um, the new clear Ghost Ops blaster that the name is escaping me for some reason, and uh, the Ruckus. So they got their hands on, pulled them out, got to function, uh, mess with the functions and shoot them and, and just kind of a long form video, really hands on first impressions and not in English. So if you don't mind it not being in English, uh, you can certainly watch that and get a vague idea, a general idea of how these blasters function and what you may uh, think of them. Now, if you want something in English, uh, Drac did just post a video of the Hypnos, a review, his hands-on and opinions of it. So that one is a little more in depth with just that blaster. If you want to take a look at it, certainly a cool looking blaster and an interesting one uh, that I think people will have some fun with, even if it does have an Atlas style magwell, which I may not have been the biggest fan of, but it certainly helps keep things slim. One other thing in terms of new blasters is uh, Blasterboy75 on Reddit posted that they found that the AccuTrooper was up on Walmart.com and available for pre-order. Uh, shipping, when I checked, should be shipping out December 5th, according to the website, so that's coming relatively soon. Now, I don't know if we're going to see the Stratohawk launching anytime soon. I checked that listing on Walmart and it still uh, showed not available. So fingers crossed that pops up sometime soon because to me, that's the one that I'm really excited about, but still worth noting that the AccuTrooper is going to be available very soon as it is a very popular and uh, very well liked shell uh, in that Alpha Trooper style. So that's cool that that's going to be available soon and you can certainly get your hands on that now, walmart.com if you would like. Let's keep things rolling with new types of products or add-ons or accessories or additions or whatever A word you want to use. Let's talk about the Caliber, because it's been a while since we've talked about that platform, and it's an absolutely fantastic one. So why not talk about the new additions to it? This is the RMAX 2 kit, uh, a myriad of different parts to go on to your Caliber. Uh, Captain Slug, a little while back, actually opened things up to the community and asked, what would you like? And what can I design? And started just designing things that people were asking for. So not only this, but some uh, changes to some parts, I believe, a little while back. So there's a lot that you can update with your caliber now. And if you want to have something a little more unique in terms of style, you can mix and match things and kind of... Uh, the platform is growing to a point where you can really make it your own. And to me, that's something I love. Absolutely love that. Uh, I know I'm looking at doing a second caliber and just as like a display piece because I have all kinds of ideas for parts to use and things and colors and and that's really part of the joy I think for that platform. Uh, now some of the stuff to note for the RMAX 2 kit is the uh, rail riser that goes above the magwell and the uh, handguard, the knuckle duster guard I believe he's calling it, along with a Pyragon style uh, foregrip. So there's a, a fair amount to look into with this along with, again, like I said, some other changes here and there. So definitely go take a look at that if you've got a Calibre or if you're thinking about um, 
picking up a Caliburn or building a Caliburn, those files will be available Sunday. So the day after this video goes live, uh, they should also be available for purchase if you are buying a Caliburn from Captain Slug. So take a look there either way. Definitely cool stuff that makes me even more excited to do another Caliburn. Even though, I mean, I guess I've got four or five strifes, so why not two Caliburns? You can never have enough blasters. Uh, but let's talk about another community blaster. Let's talk about the Foxfire MBS. The Foxfire MBS was updated to version 1.3 recently, and while they did add a new motor housing, the P housing, which is a single stage, uh, skeletonized style housing that is a little bit more sleek and, and stylized, the major changes for this update are that the files were updated and improved for printing and uh, being used in Slicer to kind of cut things up and, and all of that. And this is a big thing, even if it isn't something that uh, directly affects you, for anyone that wants to print one of these out or, or mess around with it, it makes it much, much easier. So uh, big props to them for trying to continually improve things, not just the way it functions in hand, but the way it functions when you're trying to print and create it. Uh, and they've expressed an interest in continuing to try and improve this. So definitely, definitely thumbs up there. And I still really want to see people uh, jump into the Foxfire system and create things for it. It's an open source project. So I would love to see people create their own motor housings, their own uh, cores or mag wells or all kinds of stuff, because the whole modularity thing is really cool. So I don't know, I really like this and uh, I, I, I'm, I keep hoping to see more of it. So fingers crossed that'll happen as the uh, versions continue to improve and improve over time and uh, that continues. So that is something I thought was worth sharing with all of you. One more thing to talk about community wise is something from Chest Hair Overdrive on Reddit. And this is the Blitz Saya Katana Mag Holder. This is a taco style mag holder for Katana Mags or their variants, the Katanha, uh, the Katobu, the Cabana, the Vorpal Mag, all that stuff. I, it should work based on the way this is made in that it uses elastic around 3D printed plates to secure the magazines, which is awesome. Uh, I think this is really cool. I personally think that taco style mag holders are neat. Uh, I remember trying to get Blaster Smiths UK to make some out of fo or, uh, fabric for me and they didn't quite work properly because, well, fabric isn't as solid but 3D printed material is. So this was a really smart way to go about it. And I thought was really cool. Like it looks cool too. And the fact that you can print these out in whatever color you want, get the cording in what color you want. Like there's tons of ways to customize these to make them your own. And that to me is always a plus. These are completely open source or, or openly available to people. They're not going to license them or sell them. So find people that you know that can print or if you have access to a 3D printer yourself, go about it, try them out. I know I will be looking forward to hopefully getting to try some in the future because I, um, I don't use enough Katana mags. I really don't and I have blasters that can utilize them and I want to use them more and I've got various mag holders and I always I, I always want more for some reason. It's just gear is fun. So I love sharing stuff like this. So definitely go take a look at the files if you've got katana mags that you would like to uh, have ways to hold. Yeah, uh, that's going to bring us to our mod of the week. And this week it comes to us from RZT. This is a Titanfall alternator. And this is something that is very unique looking. It's from a video game and uh, is not completely their design. They took the files from uh, Sluka Industries on Etsy. I believe they purchased the files to print and then they modified the internals or the prints, the 3D designs, so they could print and fit internals inside of them. They're utilizing a flywheel the world uh, flywheel setup, which is cool because it's so sm small and compact. It allows things like this to be possible. And it's just, it's unique and it's interesting. And I think things like that are going to become more common, become something we see more often, people really embracing uh, smaller platforms to be able to fit in more compact packages to have things that look really, really cool. So I think this is the beginning 
of more things like this. And I think it's awesome that RZT took the step to try and make something like this happen. So go take a look at that, check it out, see the, uh, the video they posted and the pictures and all that down below. One more thing, as always, is our video of the week. And this week it comes to us from Team Corvus. This is the FDL3 at Impact Northwest. This is a UK game. And this is a high powered game, which really let the FDL3 go all out and play at max power. This was just a fun video to me. It's not highly edited. It's cut together with, with highlight style. It's got music going on. Um, it's just fun. I just really, I, I've watched this video multiple times because I enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to more from them. Uh, I know they're continuing to talk about wanting to improve their videos and do more, adding like things like hit markers and stuff like that for their gameplay videos. And really just getting to watch someone mag dump and clear groups of people with an FTL over and over, just tearing things up was really satisfying. It was really fun to watch. Uh, and honestly, the GoPro Hero 7 that they are using makes a big difference in terms of head-mounted gameplay footage. And that makes gameplay footage surprisingly more watchable. So if you weren't the biggest fan of head-mounted gameplay footage, go take a look at this because the improvements that GoPro has made really makes a difference. So go take a look at that. Uh, honestly, they have far too few subscribers, so let them know I sent you. Subscribe to them, look forward to their gameplay footage, and check it out. That video is going to be right over here. So we are at the end of the episode, so go check that out. Check everything out. Let me know your thoughts on everything down below. And if you're new to the channel and enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that subscribe button for more in the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.